up on here. This is kind of a little extra video for us today. And I wanted to do a quick craft with you and show you a really cool way to add some color to your artwork. But I also wanted to give your family and you a quick tutorial on how to post photos in Google Classroom. So I'm going to show you the craft first because I think that that's something that everybody will be really interested in and I'll do a quick little drawing with you of a delightfully adorable snail and then we are going to I'll show those tutorials at the end so that any family members who are curious as to how to post in Google Classroom post a photo can um, it's really easy and it can be a little tricky to figure out at first because it's the buttons aren't really all on Google Classroom until you start typing so um, here we go. I'm gonna do the snail drawing and a little fun color printing craft. You will need, and all my supplies are over there, so here they, hold on, here they are. Oh, found them, okay. You will need a roll of tape, some aluminum foil. You will need some washable markers either Mr. Sketch or Crayola or whatever you got at home and a squirt bottle or you could probably even use like a little empty Mr. Bottle. I don't know. Something along those lines. Something to apply water. So we're going to do a quick snail drawing because I'm really, I guess I'm into snails right now and then I'm going to show you how to use all these supplies to do some rainbow marker prints yeah, fun times okay here we go all right so we're going to do an adorable snail to get started and if you would like to there's other ways that you can make the snail a little bit more advanced of a drawing and i can i'll talk about that closer to the end so we're going to start with some snail eyeballs Mrs. McKenrick has been fretting a little bit about making my drawings look great because I'm posting these videos for everyone to see and I'm worried because, you know, I'm drawing, free drawing and cartoon style drawing are not really my, um, you know, what I'm the best at. The thing that I am the best at is having fun teaching art to children and I don't have my students with me right now. So there's a little bit of a hole in my heart right now. So instead I'm trying to learn how to draw these adorable snails, okay? This is how Mrs. McKenrick is coping from not being with you is that. And I think it's going okay. All right, so here we go. I uh, we're gonna work on the sh uh, yeah shell snail shell. Now, I it's we're you know how we were supposed to have our art show and our leader in me night and it for right now that is postponed. But by golly, if I have anything to say about it, the show will go on. So I am, I still have in my head all of these ocean creatures. <laughs> so for this drawing today, I was like sea slugs <laughs> because fourth grade has been these amazing clay sea slugs and I cannot wait for them to get to add color to them. But I figured we've done ocean creatures almost every day <laughs> and I bet you guys want a little break so here's a land creature for you that's related to an ocean creature sea slug we got a land snail they're both mollusks i think or something both related i don't know we're gonna I'll, i'm gonna figure this out my friend maureen is gonna be upset that i'm i'm messing up animals again by the way just for the record if for any scientific purposes Clams do not produce pearls, oysters do. My friend Maureen is when I posted the clam 
video with the donut pearl, she immediately messaged me and said, clams do not have pearls. <laughs> and I said, I know that. But this was, it's art and you can change the rules. Okay, so we have a cute snail. Here it is. Maybe he wants to be in, in a little uh, garden with some adorable mushrooms or something. Let's see, we'll put, make a little mushroom hut here next to our adorable snail. That didn't turn out too bad. Maybe, well, we'll leave it solid because we got some polka dots already. All right, so here we go. Uh, and I am going to now show you how to get set up to do some marker printing. You are going to need a piece of tin foil. does not have to be quite so big. You want it about the size of whatever the paper is that you're working on. So this is larger. That's okay. Um, let me make sure you can see. Yes, you can. Okay. And the tape is mainly just to hold this down. Now, I saw something cool on Pinterest because I have done this before. Some of the um, kids at the primary school might remember doing some projects where we did some marker printing. Um, and we used tin foil, but if you do not have tin foil, instead you can use a plastic bag, like a um, Ziploc bag, okay? Same surface, it needs to be like a water resistant surface, basically. And the tape, just taping the corners here to hold it down. And the reason is that this can be used multiple times. It's not just a one and done situation. It's a printing plate. If you are in my printing club at the primary school and we've been doing our jelly prints, you're basically, we're doing the same thing that you do in that club, except we're gonna have to use a little water. So now I've got my cute snail. Basically, what I'm going to do is create a colorful masterpiece of different colors, and we will apply a little water, and then we will lay this on top of our tin foil, peel it or pull the print off, and we'll have a beautiful colored background. That means that when, from a color perspective and a design perspective, you're just sort of doing whatever you want. It doesn't have to be, um, you don't have to do anything significantly, um, you know, you don't have to do patterns or colors or different shapes because what you're gonna find is happening is that it will all sort of blend together. Now, y'all know that we do not mix colors with markers and hopefully you have not gone home and said, I'm just gonna go crazy mixing markers because I don't have to do it at school or I'm not allowed to do it at school. Instead, hopefully you are being very respectful of your supplies at home, just like you are at school, because you all know that if I throw my orange marker in with the red marker here, what we're gonna see happen is that things get a little bit, well, my orange marker would start to get red on top and then I'm, mixing up my colors and I don't want that. All right, quiz for you. What family of colors did Mrs. McKenrick choose to use for her printing plate? Let's make this multiple choice. Did I use warm colors or cool colors? Tell your parents, tell your brother, tell your sister. Warm, warm colors. All of the red, orange, and yellow. The pink is, eh. you know, pink's a little tr tricky because you all know that pink is a tint. 
It is a tint. It is red plus white. All right, squirt bottle. We have a lot of these squirt bottles at our house because the dogs are bad. And when they are bad, they get squirted with a squirt bottle. For example, when Archie tries to eat the entire dish of butter off of the counter, squirt bottle. Or when Miri digs a hole in our couch, squirt bottle. That's what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. I'm gonna, I actually want it to be more misty. Misty, not so squirty. Ah, yes, okay, see how the colors kind of meld together? Snail, face down. All right, now, this is our favorite thing at the primary school. We're going to give our snail a little massage. Nice back rub. Paper's gonna get wet, that's okay. It dries. All right, now let's pull our print and see what happened. Boop. There we go. There is our, I don't know, maybe it's like a super snail psychedelic tie-dye snail, something like that. All right, so this technique is so cool because not only can you do stuff like this where you create a drawing, I didn't say this before, you need a permanent marker. I'm gonna go back and edit that into the video. You need a permanent marker to do your snail drawing for this because if you use a washable marker like the Mr. Sketch or a Crayola marker, your black lines will run. So you need a permanent marker or you can use a pencil, okay? But you are, I love this technique because you can instantly take a very simple drawing like this adorable snail and you can turn it into a bright, colorful array of fun. Um, the other thing that I love, and let's see, do I have a paper towel? Yeah, I'm gonna find one. Finding a paper towel. Another reason that I just love this technique is because now I'm just going to take that water and I'm going to use a paper towel and I'm going to just wipe all of the extra marker away and then it's fresh and ready to go and it's great. Okay, now we can do it again. Um, and I'm going to show you one more thing. If you did this, over and over again with lots of papers and lots of different colors. And you could do rainbow ones, you could do all cool colors, you could do all warm colors. Maybe you do two colors from the color wheel right next to each other. You're gonna end up, if you don't do the drawings on them, you're going to end up with all these awesome, beautiful printed papers. And then you can use them for other crafts. You could cut them up and you could use them to make collages. We could do some paper weaving with these. Primary school and third graders, you guys know how to paper weave. You can do any of that stuff making your looms. So this is a cool technique because it can have so many different applications and um, that's it. Now I am going to show your parents how to post in Google Classroom while you guys print and send me some photos so I can see. I miss you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, so here I am on my Chromebook and I'm in Google Classroom and I want to share my work with my class. First, you're going to need to take a photo. If you swipe up from the bottom of your screen and click on the camera app, then it will automatically open and you can snap a photo by clicking that gray button it will save into your download files. You can close that out. And then at, on um, Classroom, click Add, then File. Click Upload, select files from your device, and you'll have a couple of different locations. Your Downloads file will probably automatically open and the picture you just took will be at the very top of the list. If you click on that and click open, then upload, 
that will add the attachment of your file. Then you can type something like, this is a great picture of me. Or like, here is my superhero. And then you can click post. On the iPad, where you type share with your class, a paperclip icon comes up in the top right corner. You can then have an option to use your camera or select from other file types. You can then snap your picture like you would with your typical iPhone or iPad camera and click use photo. Then you can just post whatever you want or you could pull a photo up from other places. You don't have to respond to a post or an assignment in order to post on either the Chromebook or the iPad on Google Classroom. I hope this was helpful for you. Please contact me if you have any other questions.